history lovers, welcome to this Tweet in History, the Week in Review, podcasting to you on tape delay from our North America studios. Here are your top stories for the week ending April 17th, 2010. World, Dateline Space, April 13th, 1970. Houston, we've had a problem. Apollo 13's oxygen tank explodes en route to the moon. The backstory. The drama that unfolded in space that fateful day began on Earth some five years earlier. Apollo's designers realized that 28 volts weren't sufficient and made the change to 65 volts. A thermostat supplier, however, didn't get the change. The change had gone unnoticed through all previous Apollo missions, but lucky number 13 was using a tank that had been dropped two years earlier. This combination of events led to the thermostat's failure and to a gas leak that put the crew's lives in jeopardy. Through the efforts of the highly skilled ground support team and the astronaut crew, the accident wasn't fatal, but Apollo 13 never made it to the moon. Sports, Dateline Canada, April 12, 1980. Canadian athlete, amputee, Terry Fox begins Trans-Canadian Marathon of Hope Against Cancer. The backstory. When Terry Fox, the college basketball player, learned that he would lose his leg to cancer, he came up with an audacious plan. He would run across Canada a marathon a day to raise both cancer awareness and funds to fight the disease. Two years after his operation, he began over 3,000 miles of training and lined up sponsors. He began his run dipping his artificial leg into the Atlantic Ocean off Newfoundland and covered six provinces before, over 3,300 miles and 143 days into his marathon of hope, he collapsed, the cancer having spread to his lungs. He was taken home and was able to watch as his nation adopted his cause and pulled together to raise over $10 million for the cure. Things that make you go, huh? Dateline Europe, April 17th, 1986. Finally, treaty ends 335-year war between the Netherlands and Scilly. The backstory. During the British Civil War, when Oliver Cromwell and his parliamentarians were storming the nation, the Isles of Scilly were the last royalist stronghold. Weighing in on the parliamentarian side, the Netherlands dispatched their navy to the Isles, where they met great resistance with ships and goods seized by the royalists. In 1651, after the Dutch demand for reparations was met with an unsatisfactory response, Admiral Martin Harpertsum's Trump declared war on the Royalist Isles. Shortly thereafter, the parliamentarians took over the Isles, and before a shot was fired, the war was forgotten. By the Dutch, at least. With no peace treaty in place, the state of war persisted in rumor and in local jokes on the Isles until, in 1985, Council Chair Roy Duncan inquired of the Dutch Embassy in London, who confirmed the rumor and agreed to send Ambassador Jonkheer Hude Cooper to Scilly to sign the treaty that would put 335 years of war behind them. This week's birthdays, April 11th, designer Oleg Cassini, April 12th, jazz musician Herbie Hancock, April 13th, author Eudora Welty, April 14th, baseball great Pete Rose, April 15th, artist Leonardo da Vinci, April 16th, Pope Benedict XVI, and April 17th, Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev. Thank you for joining us for this Tweet in History, the Week in Review. Be sure to follow us on Twitter.com slash HistoryTweet, and check our archives at HistoryTweet.blogspot.com. Dot com.